Hello everyone, welcome to Illustrator. So this is the third lecture of this series on RCC box culvert design. So in our previous lecture, we have seen how to calculate the different loads. So we have estimated the superimposed dead load due to the road crust. We have estimated the earth pressure uh, at rest condition and active earth pressure. Okay. We have also estimated the live load surcharge. So now in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can assign these loads in our uh, analysis model that we have created in our first lecture. So if you remember, this is our analysis model. We have done the center line modeling. So now we'll be first defining the load cases one by one. For that, I'll go to load here and I'll go to static load cases. I'll name the first load case, suppose DL for the dead load and remember this dead load case will be I'll be using only for the self weight of the structure so type will be dead load and I'll click on add now I will change I will make another load case SIDL superimposed dead load for all the superimposed dead loads like road crust and any other load if it is there then it will be applying under this particular load case the type will be dead I'll click on add then I'll apply the earth pressure loads so earth pressure at rest condition okay i'll change the load type to earth pressure i'll click on add then we have earth pressure in active condition active earth pressure so active add then we have the live load such and so lls and i'll make it for at rest condition and uh let me ch change the type to user defined type I'll modify this okay and then i'll be making it as active condition and add okay so uh, i have uh, one two three four five six load cases and accordingly we'll be applying the loads on the structure now after defining this load cases static load cases i'll close it and uh, first i will apply the you can say the self weight of the structure so for that under this load, uh, you can say menu only, we'll be having this self weight here. So we'll click on structure loads and masses, self weight. The load case will be selecting DL, which is meant to consider our, uh, you can say, self weight of the structure. You can see the weight Z is upwards as our global Z is upwards. So we'll be applying the factor as minus one because we want the uh, load to be acted downward that means along uh, towards gravity so now i'll click on add and our self weight application is done i'll close this you can see in the tree menu the self weight is added here now i'll be applying the superimposed dead load so the superimposed dead load due to the road crust that we have calculated which includes the wearing coat load and the load due to the fill it is around 13.1 kilometer per meter correct so in that case i'll be applying this so what i will do i'll still take the select window uh, select tool select single tool i'll select this uh, you can say line you can use both element and line option for for this particular purpose let us say we'll consider this element load i'll change the load case type to sidl okay the load type will be uniform direction will be global z downwards i want to apply and here x1 and x2 means the factor for the load so x1 means the factor for the first node location so suppose we start we are starting from here 0 0 and x21 that means the second load condition now in case of the element load which point is the starting point which one is the uh, ending point to understand that we need to see the direction of the element so for that i'll go to display and i'll click on element and here you will find this option local direction check this and apply if i just keep this here you'll see an arrow is visible so that means it is showing the element is starting from this end and ending here so that means the value uh, the x1 corresponds to this point and the x2 corresponds to this point okay now i'll turn off this okay and i will give an as it is a uniform load then it's fine but if it is a, a varying load so in that case these two nodes which one is starting and which one is ending it's very important you will see in the next lecture i mean in the next uh, load case that will be applied so it will be minus 
point one okay and I'll click on apply so you can see a uniform dead load of a uniform superimposed dead load of 13.1 is applied on the top slab okay so this is the element load type now for the walls let us see I will be using this line beam load so I'll just close this I'll go to line beam loads now these walls will be subjected to the earth pressure and the surcharge so if you see the earth pressure at rest condition okay uh, we have at the location the starting location the load is 8.5 you have seen why it is 8.5 why not 0 because we are considering 0 at the top of road crust right so here at the center where we started modeling it is 8.5 kilo per meter here it is written kilometer meter square okay when we'll be multiplying one meter width then it will be kilo per meter correct so and the bottom it will be 32.5 so it is for at rest condition now we have modeled this structure along global z so i'll change it to global sorry global x so it will be global x and from left to right it is positive right to left it is negative okay so i will change the load type first load case name to earth pressure at rest load type as trapezoidal loads okay now my x1 and x2 will be i'll be defining okay so how i will show you here first i will change the direction to global x okay x1 is 0 x2 is 1 because i want 100 percent the load to be applied in the 100 percent length this is 8.5 and this is 13 sorry uh, I think 13 uh, 32.5 so this is 32.5 okay now nodes for loading line it is asking so you click here now the first node that we will be selecting this will be the x1 this will be denoting the x1 position and the second node you will be selecting it will be the x2 position right so I want this 8.5 to be applied at the top so I will start from here so from this point this point you can see a trapezoidal load is applied here here the load intensity is 8.5 and the bottom of the load intensity is 32.5 kilo per meter now similarly we need to apply in the other side but the direction will be negative because it is from right to left so i'll make the node load values as negative i'll select here i'll select the first point the second point okay so earth pressure active uh, earth pressure rest condition is done correct similarly i will close it or, or you can you can do it together itself now we'll be applying the earth pressure active so again similar one or maybe i'll be applying the element uh, option here okay so let us show you how to use the element option also for the trapezoidal so now i will again go to my whiteboard and for the active condition the top load is 5.05 .05, the bottom load is 19.31 5.01 uh, 5.05 and 19.31 i have selected the element load now for this i need to know the direction of the element so direction of the local uh, axis so i'll click on local direction apply you can see here it is going from bottom to top so that means my starting point is this one ending point is this one as per the element direction so accordingly i need to apply the uh, load so now i will change this to earth pressure active I'll change this uniform load to trapezoidal load. I'll change the global Z to global X. Now, my X1 here, as this arrow is going upwards, so my X1 will be this point, the bottom point, X2 will be this point. But I want the lower, smaller load to be applied at the top, higher load to be applied at the bottom. So we need to do it accordingly. So what I will do, X2, I'll keep it as 1 and here the value the zero value uh, that means this position i'll keep the maximum one which is uh 19.31 so at the zero it is 19.31 at the one that means the 100 percent of the length that means at the top in this case as the arrow is going up it is 5.05 correct okay what i will do i will select this 
I'll click on apply. So this load is applied. Similarly, I'll apply here. We just have to negative, I mean, give negative sign to this and apply. Okay, I will show you this. This intensities are not, not visible here. I will show you the, whether it is uh, applied correctly or not later, right? So we have applied the active earth pressure uh, load, right? Similarly, we can apply the, uh, you can say, the surcharge loads for active and rest. So I will change it to live load surcharge at rest. Now you do not need a uh, trapezoidal option, it is a uniform load. So what is the surcharge load that we have estimated for? Rest condition is 12 kilo per meter, and for active earth uh, condition it is 7.13. So 12 and 7.13. So I will LLS rest uniform load global x. Okay, this value will be 12. Okay, at rest condition, I'll select this. Right, 12 and 7.13. So, not this one. Sorry, I have. A, I need to select this only as it is positive. I'll click on apply. Okay, I'll select this. I'll make it is minus 12. I'll click on apply. Similarly, I'll change it to LLS active, and now I will make it 7.13. I'll select this apply i'll select this i'll make it minus apply okay now i'll close this and i will show you one by one self weight it is already applied okay element load for the sidl so i'll make it display so you can see it is 13.1 13.1 that means the, along the whole length it is 13.1 which is applied then earth pressure at rest if i make this load display so it is you can see 8.5 32.5 this is how we expected right then let me make it a bit bigger so that it is clearly visible okay now if i go to the element load for the earth pressure active you can see 5.05 that means it is showing 5.0 anyway and it is 19.31 or 19 right 19.3 then we have the live load surcharge at rest display you can see it is a uniform load of 12 kiloton per meter and then live load such as for active condition it is a 7.13 that is 7.1 it is applied uniformly throughout the height of the wall right so all these loads we have applied in our structure right so i hope this is clear how to apply this static load that we have calculated so in our from our previous i mean uh, from our previous estimation uh, with what we have done manually we have applied these uh, loads okay so in our next lecture we may proceed with the live loads or let's see or if whatever loads are there we'll be calculating step by step and we'll be applying this in our analysis model and then we'll go for analysis and design okay so if you have any doubt you can always write me in the comment i will try to solve those as soon as possible and uh, i will see you in the next lecture thank you